Hey, I'm Andrew Connell. This video is an overview of one of the chapters in my course, Mastering the SharePoint Framework, that's available for uh, purchase on my site, Voitanos.io. This overview video is going to give you an idea of everything that the chapter uh, covers. You can learn more by checking out the description uh, in the notes below the video. Um, if you got any questions about this chapter or about the course in general, just make sure you drop a comment uh, below in, in the uh, below the video, and I'll be sure to get back to you. So with that, let me get out of the way. Enjoy the overview to this chapter. The Microsoft Graph has become a very powerful and popular API for developers in recent years. And it can give developers access to a user's email, calendar, contacts, files in OneDrive, and many other Microsoft 365 related services. Now, in this chapter, you're going to learn how you can work with the Microsoft Graph APIs in custom SharePoint framework solutions. Now, it may surprise you that this chapter is relatively short, especially when you compare it to other chapters. This chapter is going to build on other chapters that cover leveraging external data from external sources in SharePoint framework solutions. So I expect that you've already watched the chapter on leveraging APIs in SharePoint framework solutions. And in that chapter, I explained how the SharePoint framework has set up to call external web services using the HTTP client, and then how it's also set up to call web services or endpoints and APIs that are secured with Azure AD using the AAD HTTP client. The Microsoft Graph uses a lot of that infrastructure under the covers in, term, in the context of the SharePoint framework. The graph itself doesn't, but the way we call it in the SharePoint framework, it uses a lot of the topics and infrastructure that I covered in that other chapter. We have a separate chapter in this course related to the Microsoft Graph because there is a special API that we can use to take advantage of those things, but it makes it a little bit easier for us in the SharePoint framework. And so that's why I have a separate chapter on this. Now, as you see in other chapters that address a, an API like the SharePoint, the chapter that dealt with the SharePoint REST API, this chapter, it could be huge in terms of talking about everything you can do with that API, but that's just not feasible to cover every single topic that you can do. And instead, my approach is to make sure you understand how to use the Microsoft Graph in the SharePoint framework, and also just some understanding of what the value is in the Microsoft Graph so that maybe you want to consider it for your next project, uh, your next SharePoint framework project. You're really going to want to go look at the resources that I, that I reference inside this chapter to go learn about all the capabilities of dealing with the Microsoft Graph. Instead, you're not going to find all of those inside of this chapter. Okay. So, what kinds of things are you going to find in this chapter? Well, it really is broken down into three main sections and then a demo. I'm going to deal first with just an overview of what the Microsoft Graph is. And then we're going to explain kind of how the Microsoft Graph and the SharePoint framework kind of come together and how that's what that story looks like and how you can take advantage of it. Then we're going to start diving into the developer topics. I'm going to show you how to call the Microsoft Graph from a SharePoint framework solution. And then we'll do a demo where we're going to go fetch some data from the Microsoft Graph and display it in a client-side web part. So let's go ahead and get started and jump into our overview.